Welcome everybody to the podcast. Today is an episode that is a little bit different. We had something else planned, but we started talking and we were like, whoa, this is really kind of crazy. And we kind of, we know a lot of people liked our last episode where we went really deep into what a session looks like and how we help guide people through certain things. And that was honestly only the tip of the iceberg, the, the yeah. podcast that we did, because we really do go a lot further, but we were just talking about our own stuff. And so we kind of wanted to do like to share that with everybody yeah. and just kind of show you what our path has been like and kind of where we are now and where we could have been and where we, I don't know, just all these things that we're kind of tripping out about. So yeah. <laughs> definitely a different kind of episode, but Danny, go for it. You were just talking about kind yeah, of like where you started, I guess, like adulthood, yeah. so to speak, right? Yeah. The conversation started with, I could just have tears come out of my eyes thinking about what if I didn't know this information yeah. and how different my life would have been. And, you know, it's like the butterfly effect, right? Like you find something and you go one way and like, this is what it could look like, or you go another way. And you don't always know, obviously you just pick a path. Right. And so I started, we just started talking about like, whoa, look how crazy, like all of our changes that have come through doing this work. And our original podcast was talking about resistance. And I think we can weave that in today as we, we talk about our own stuff. And I was like, think about it, Paloma. Like before we started ITC, like we had already had a really good foundation of brain work and we had been doing our primitive reflex integration, lower brain um, development pretty regularly. Um, I mean, honestly, I did fall off though because I had kids and things yes. happened. And um, and to remind you all our story of I was working somewhere, Paloma and I met at that place and then I branched off, Paloma and I then connected again and we worked together for two and a half years and then I had my first child and everything kind of went a different direction for a while and then we connected in 2020 when the pandemic hit and it was kind of we like- We connected randomly though, actually, random. Danny, because we connected in 2019, I was working with a kiddo that I was- his creep just was not evolving. And mm -hmm. I was like, what's going Like he was stuck in the same pattern for maybe like a month. And I was like, this mm -hmm. makes no sense. What's going on? And so I called you randomly and you were like, oh my God, we hadn't talked in like, I don't know, a really long Years. time. I mean, yeah. we always were like in contact and stuff, yeah. but like we hadn't like had a conversation. And so you talked about it with me, blah, blah. And you were like, well, have you looked at like the emotional piece. And that's where I was like, wait, what? And you yeah. rocked my world when you started to talk about all the subconscious, sent me all these books and like podcasts yeah. and all these links and things to look into. And I was like, this is so cool. And so we just kind of opened our channel again of collaboration. And you, I was in Mexico City back then and you had another company mm -hmm. and you were like, well, maybe we can do like a Mexico City branch. And I was like, great, amazing. And then the pandemic hit. And then the pandemic hit. And then that's when, I mean, I was still honestly like doing certain things that people felt comfortable with. And, um, but I was more so like, wait, we need to take this to another level. And I knew that with you, cause we knew each other so well, I was like, Bloom and I can do this. Yeah. And so that's when we brought on the whole online program. And that's where we really created this incredible program. And then let's say like a year after we created it, um, we started doing it more hardcore <laughs> and two like two and a half years after we created maybe it, two, yeah, yeah, it took a minute because I was already in Mexico when we started it. So and right I was there, in Spain for the first two years. Yeah. Right there. That was like our resistance piece. Like, yes. and we had like an aha. We're like, how are we expecting people to do this if we're not committed to doing it daily? And that's where we <sighs> really shifted our messaging of this is lifetime. This is a lifestyle. This is something you mm -hmm. have to commit to for your life because you're a human and you have emotions and you're going to have mm -hmm. triggers and you're going to have activations in your nervous system for as long as you're a human. Mm -hmm. So we're like, we really need to share this with people because we both learned it that you do a certain amount and you're done and you never have to do it again. And I just found that was so not the case. And that's what actually started my business when I branched off originally. But yeah. um, so as we started to commit to it and broke through our resistance of doing it daily we started experiencing incredible changes even more. Like our lives had changed to get us to that point. And then we dove deeper and then we yes. started diving into subconscious stuff. And the crazy part, this is what we were just talking about. We're like, let's hit record because I was like, think about my life when we yeah. first met, when we started ITC, what, four years ago, literally in April, it was like four years ago. When yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I had just gone to Rhode yeah. Island. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I was like, 
think about it. I was married. I had two kids. I owned a home. I had all the things, right? And I looked like my life was perfect. I'm doing air quotes. <laughs> and as we started to like get into this work, all of a sudden my life kind of exploded. And we're not saying this to scare you. It just gave me so many new tools. And trust me, I'm so grateful for where I am today. I've never been better in my headspace, my life and all the things. Um, but it took some really deep work and some really deep examining of why am I here now? Mm -hmm. And I really peeled back the layers and I was like, wait, I'm actually not happy with all this perfect life stuff. Like, right. I and I think you had, you had convinced yourself that you were happier. You had right. like kind of, I guess, kind of fallen into what you like society's society's <laughs> expectation. It always comes up. You had just fallen into it, right? You were like, oh, this is what I was supposed to I checked want. All the this boxes. is the I'm supposed to be with. This is a person that I chose. This is, you know, the house, the thing, blah, blah, like whatever. And yep. I think once everything got so rocked with the pandemic, with starting this online business, which was not easy, it's still yeah. not easy, but uh -huh. it's amazing and we love it. Yeah. And that's, I think, when you started to really let yourself reevaluate things. I don't think you were letting yourself before. I think you were a little bit in that, like, I'm not, don't look, if you don't look at it, you won't see it or whatever it is kind yeah. of mentality. Oh, a hundred percent. And then as I started doing more brain work and as we started connecting more and then, um, and then I was like, Paloma, and I knew I needed a change and I didn't know what that change yes. was. And that's when all of a sudden I was like, well, an easy moving forward thing for me was let's sell our house and let's buy an RV and let's travel the whole country. Cause I was like, I got to get out of California. Like that was my mindset. Like that was, that was what I thought the solution was, but that just was the tip of the iceberg. That's just what started stirring it all up. Right. Exactly. And so we made this massive leap and my ex-husband was just like, no, I don't want to do it. Cause he's so resistant to change and he's a mm -hmm. great, great human. There's no yes. evil or anything. No, he's a great co parenting relationship. And we've talked about this extensively. So he's okay with me sharing this. And um, and so he was just like, I don't want to do this. And I was like, but I do. And I knew deep down, like there was something going on in me. And I was like, I, I need to get to the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. And as we traveled the whole country, 11,000 miles, Paloma and I were building out the program, driving ourselves nuts with no internet connection. It was just like, <laughs> yeah. I, when you look back at it, you're like, what? Did it you was wait? so funny. But we just kept going. And then you, as soon as I get back, then you're like, I'm moving to Spain and I'm going to yeah. do my master's, my double master's program. And I was like, we can make nine hour difference work. She was waking up like two in the morning and like oh God. calls. And we're like, so when you really think about what we've done in these past four years, it's actually quite amazing. And that 100%. is so symbolic of what it looks like when you start doing this work. You think yeah. like it's just one clear trajectory of like, I'm going to start here and I'm going to end up here. And that's so not the case. Like you start doing yeah. something, you do like a massive U-turn, you come back, you're like, that didn't work. Go this way, go that way. And you just keep trying new things. And the fact that neither of us were resistant to trying new things was the key piece. Because that's what I was going to say. Because we had our brain organized and we had our well, brain. I think, I think back to when we actually first heard about that, that we didn't have our brain organized. That's true. That we weren't resistant to that. You know, like I remember when I first heard of it, when I went to that center with my brother, who I think a lot of you have heard my brother's story. He really is like a huge inspiration for me to get into this because he was the, the I lived his success case in my house and yeah. he we went to this place. She did an assessment. She had us both creep and crawl on the floor. And she told us so much about our brains. And I remember I was a very, my, my creep was already very developed. Um, I think I was at like 90% already. Right. I was like really smooth. And she told me, well, once, once my brother came out, she was like, he got down on the floor and he couldn't move. He mm. physically could not move. And I was like, what? But it's so what? And so she started telling us about the brain, about how it worked. And there was just something in my mind that was like, oh my God, click, like absolute click. Because I was already, I was in, um, I think I was still in college at that point, but I had already, I'd done like an internship at like Mars chocolate. And then I was working at Accenture. And then I was doing all these like super corporate things that I thought I had to do. Cause I went to business school. Although originally I wanted to go to into psychology, but my parents were like, no, 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 no. You have to go into like the safe route. Right. So I went to business and, but I always had that in me, right. Where I was like, I'm so obsessed with human behavior and like all these things. And so I learned about it 
And I remember my mom kind of thinking like, that's a little weird, but you know, we'll try it, whatever. At that point, like so many people that come with us, my brother, I think was like 17. She was like, I'll try anything. I'll try anything. I want him to be able to be himself and succeed in life and not have to depend on us or on medication or something like that. So that's where she was more like at the desperate point where she was just like, yeah, whatever, I'll do it. And she tried everything. Because she she literally tried tried everything. My brother had been all over the US and Mexico to all the different therapies, all the things. I Sometimes I'll mention like a therapy that I'm like, oh, have you ever heard of this? My mom's like, yeah, your brother did it. And I'm like, oh, (laughs) so you do know all of the therapies are out there ever. Um, And that's where I think the first piece came in is that my brain was really, I don't remember ever questioning it. And I'm Mm -hmm. somebody who was a very like, self-proclaimed skeptic. Like I was all, Ooh, um, I was all about like, you know, the science-based things that of course this was also before like social media was what it is today. So let's also keep that in mind. But I was always also very about like straightforward, like no woo woo things, none of that hippie, you know, stuff. I, I was totally against that stuff. So it was very interesting kind of to, to, for me to actually just do it. And I think it's because it truly is my calling that I was able to not have that resistance. But if it hadn't been for that, I would be like in corporate America today, like probably yeah. working at, you know, one of those big companies and just probably not it. very aligned with who I am. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. what the conversation was really about. Like where we all of a sudden realize like how much brain regulation, because you did experience a lot of change once you started looking at your reflexes and once you looked at your midbrain and you're like, yes. oh, wow, I actually do have a lot of growth to do. And, and yeah. yeah. And initially though, I was resistant to even doing the the, the creeping because yeah. I was like, I'm good. Like, oh, that's right. 95%, you know? And I, when I was in San Diego, even I didn't really create, like I did all the other stuff and it helped me so much. I did all the reflexes, but I didn't actually fully dedicate myself to creeping, creeping until we did it when I was in Mexico, like Mm -hmm. until like a couple of weeks, uh, months, years ago, years ago. Yeah. Last year, last year we did last summer. Um, and I felt, I still felt amazing changes and I felt more connected with myself and all these things, but I still had that one piece of resistance to the creeping itself. Then that, tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. So basically when you have resistance to anything, it's really a true indicator that that's what you need the most. And, Mm -hmm. and it also means that you have to learn how to approach that resistance, because if you try to force yourself through it, you'll actually create more anger and more like internal stuff. And your body will start talking to you and will start Mm -hmm. to like shut down and we'll start to get sick and we'll start to have other things happen. So trusting that when you're ready, you'll feel that moment of like, okay, now I'm ready. I'm ready to dive into this thing that I've been hearing about now for years or months or weeks, and I'm ready to see what it does. And a lot of times we have this feeling because when you have tried so many different things and maybe it didn't give you those results that people promised you, you're like, okay, what's one more thing? You're going to promise me this? There's no possible way that my life is going to change that much. And it really does change so drastically. And our members say all the time, we wish we started here. And we go, yeah, but you had to go try all those other things first to understand how powerful brain reorganization is. Totally. That was 100% my whole thing too is, and I had always been, so I had, once I had my kids too, I was in the brain work world because I wanted my kids to creep and crawl. And so I had been doing it. I never took a full full stop from doing my brain work. But what I wasn't doing was really, really examining why I was in a certain situation that was making me so unhappy. Mm-hmm. And um, and I thought running, flight, going, finding a new place was going to solve all my problems. And so many people do this. They go, if I just move to this place or this, then all of a sudden my life is going to be different. And oh, that's one of my is, beliefs too. Like every time I'm in an airport, I'm like, where can I move today? And yeah. every new city I visit, I'm like, I'm moving here. Like and literally anywhere. This is huge because yeah. honestly, what do you bring with you everywhere you go? 
your own mind, your own stuff, right? <laughs> like it yeah, grows. It's so it doesn't silly. matter. Yeah. And this is what people do too. And it, it could just be like the physical, but it's also the emotional. Like I'm going to leave this relationship and go get another one. And how many times do we repeat the same pattern? Cause we never Absolutely. went inward to go, well, why was I even unhappy in the first place? And so this is why we see these just loops that people get stuck in. And so for us, we really confronted it. We really looked at it and was like, okay, let's commit to this. Let's do the work. And that's when, so when I got back from traveling the country, I, that's when everything kind of came under a microscope for mm -hmm. me because we were then pressure cooked into a tiny RV with two small kids and we were traveling and, you know, it's not always easy to pack two kids up that are young and no. travel 300 miles a day and do all the things, especially when one person's like, I don't want to do this. And I was like, well, then why are you here? <laughs> you know, like, and when we got back, I was just like, wait, maybe it's not the move we need. Maybe it's more of a, a shift in how we're living. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I decided that it was time for us to get a divorce because my husband at the time was just not open to, he was very resistant to, I want to go look at these things. And mm -hmm. that's okay. And I think that's such an important message for people to understand. Like when you stay stuck in a relationship and you're resistant to changing things, like what are you really, what is that saying? Like, yeah, you made a commitment to be married. But, and, you know, we have the whole society's expectations and we realize how much our world has created a marriage as to this like false pretense of what is really healthy. And mm -hmm. we've created a, an industry built on people thinking that till death do us part. And it's like, but you know what, if you're unhappy, that doesn't serve anybody. And I really thought about that when I started doing reconnects, I was like, if I'm showing my kids what an unhealthy love, like, and it wasn't like there was any abuse, there's no abuse. It was just like, I was growing at a tremendous rate. Cause I kept digging mm -hmm. into my stuff and I was like, Holy cow, this is why I ended up here. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I made this choice. And now I want to shift it. And I just, we just went different paths. We grew differently. Totally. And so when I started looking at that, I was like, and I was really stuck in that crossroads of, do I stay with him to help my, to like have that, you know, little nuclear family and showing my kids like this is what a mom and dad look like mm -hmm. and or do I make that really bold choice and say but I want to show my kids what like really great love looks like and like right. and, and prioritizing me to show what healthy for myself look like and I will tell you it's not easy like there would be mm -hmm. tears like there's no way like even a year ago I could have said it without crying because right Divorce is hard. It's so hard. But once you get to the other side of it and you start to learn like who you authentically are and why you're creating certain relationships and why you're doing what you're doing, you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm finding who I am and I'm living mm -hmm. my life. And that's where we started to get really deep on this oh, right, yeah. where we started realizing like, wait a minute, we both just this like, like massive life changes. And then we both ended up at our parents' house. Yeah. <laughs> And we're like, okay, but there's no shame here. And this is where I think Paloma and I have come onto this planet to like really break the mold of like, you don't have to live a way that's making you feel sad. Totally. And you don't have to fit into yeah. society's expectations just because that's what's expected. Like, it's just not a thing. And it's all about doing what is going to help you. And when, it, when, when it's the right time for you, you know, like, so, and this has probably happened to you so many times where people will reach out, they're curious about it. They're asking questions and you're like, sure. Let me know if you have any other questions. Let me know when you want to sign up, blah, blah. Then they'll reach out a week later. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I've been so busy. I'm the worst. I always do this. I'm so flaky. Oh my God, please forgive me. And I'm like, yeah. you're forget. There's not, there's nothing to forgive. You're, you're good. <laughs> And then yeah, the, a week later, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't text you back about this thing. Oh, blah, blah. And you're just like, when you're ready, I'm here. And I always just say that I'm not pressuring you at all. There's no expectation here. When you're ready, just call me. And that's it, you know, or sign up or send us a DM or set up a 15 minute call or whatever it is, especially with people yeah. you already know, like friends who are like, I really want to do this. And then a month later you run into them at a party. They're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I've just been so busy. And I'm like, Babe, imagine we never even talked about it. Imagine yeah. I'm somebody that's just on the internet and you've never met her, right? Like, yeah. please, they're really, you know, it all, and it always works out the way it has to. It mm -hmm. always ends up being the moment when they're actually ready to commit to it. Because if you're not, you're not going to do it. The divine timing is so mm -hmm. key. And that's such a big piece because there was no, I wasn't ready to do a lot of the things I did sooner. And mm -hmm. um, 
And I love that you said that because I, I do meet a lot of people who learn about this and they're like interested and they're like, I really do want to bring it up and I do want to get into it. And then they think of all the excuses as to why I can't do it yet. It's oftentimes it starts with money. And so we're like, well, guess what? We lowered our prices to make it so accessible. It's cheaper than going out to dinner at dinner. a fast food restaurant yeah. with your whole family in per month. So like, imagine we just like didn't eat that for one, one, one night for a whole month, you would already pay for the program and you just do that 12 times and the program's paid for. Yeah. So we're like, Hey, we removed that obstacle for you. They're like, Oh, okay. Crap. What's another reason I'm not ready. And then like, I just don't have the space. And we're like, guess what? We've thought of so many different ways of how you can get it in. And we're so creative because we've been this for a long time. And our members mm-hmm. have come up with genius ideas on how you can get this brain work in daily. And then it's, oh, I don't have the time. And then we go, but what do you spend your time on? Yeah. And and it's not that we're trying to like make you feel like you're, you know, needing to have an excuse. It's just, you're just not ready. And so what Paloma is saying is we accept, and we've worked on ourselves so much to just know it's not personal. We don't take totally. this stuff personal. I mean, obviously if someone's going to call us a specific name, we'll be like, that kind of hurts. <laughs> feel it. We have feelings, but we're also that like, hasn't happened projecting. Yet, we get yeah. it. Um. And it's just like, it's, you weren't ready. And I I look, I can do the whole same thing with me. And I'm like, why didn't I do this stuff sooner? Like, why did I get married to somebody if I knew that like that wasn't the partner that was going to fulfill me? And then I'm like, but that doesn't serve me because that just Mm -mm. keeps me stuck in this guilt and shame loop. And we just want everyone to know that when you are ready, that resistance will release. And then all of a sudden the doors will open and you're like, okay, I'm ready. And And it's so easy to get caught up in your day-to-day life. And we all do it. We get caught up in our habits, in our routines, in our wants and our needs and our things that we have to do and that we want to do. Right. And I think that that's one of the first pieces that you either hit a really specific pain point and you're like, okay, now I really want to do this. Now I really want to change. Or you get to the point where you're growing in a different way, right? So whether that's like situational or you're doing another method, you're doing meditation, for example, lots of people that come to us have done lots of meditation or have done lots of other other um, somatic practices and that kind of stuff. And that has helped their nervous system ease into the idea of starting to do the brain work, right? And so I think that's also okay. And that also happens to everybody. We were just talking about our resistance to meditation. We yeah. were we both have such resist. I have been thinking about meditation for so long and I, I used to meditate, but like very little, I never really was consistent with it. And I started to think about it more recently because my friends started doing, um, Vedic meditation. And so they love it. And they, I've just seen such like amazing positive changes in them and the way that they are just themselves just so much more easily. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to look into it, but I'm kind of, you know, I've been asking around, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go to this talk, this informational thing. But, and there's a part of me that's like, you have so many other meditation options, by the way. Yeah. And today, Danny and I were like, what's the resistance? I'm like, we, I was muscle checking myself. I want to do it. I see the value in it. I am excited to do it. I don't have any resistance to the actual meditation. What I have resistance to is making that spot in my day for the meditation. And that's where I found a really good reconnect. It was like, okay, I, I find that space. I make that space for this thing. But that's what we tell our members too. It's like, it's not even that long per day, but everybody finds those excuses. And if you really look back at your day, there were 20 minutes or 10 minutes for meditating that you could have done mm-hmm. instead of you know whatever you were doing, staring at the wall, right. scrolling, whatever you were doing, right? And this is at where at ITC we explain that there is such a huge component of the brain and how it's operating. And if it's not wired to do certain things, it just can't. Mm. And then we have our subconscious. So in the subconscious programming, we were a, we were given essentially from mm. our first seven years of life. And the brain piece, which has really got me lately because I've been really focusing on doing more brain work and I really know I have to do brain work to keep my life in order. Mm. And um I started crawling more and I just told you like last week, I was like, Paloma, I used to do this thing where like I would put in my mind, oh, I got to go start my laundry. I got to go do this. Oh, it's going to take me like 20 minutes. And I would just start to talk myself out of how long something was going to take me. And then just last week it clicked where I was like, I'm just going to go do it. And then I would just get up and do it. And then I would come back and look at the clock. I was like, one minute went by. That was it. That took a minute. And I had this huge relief of like, 
why did I do that to myself? But because the midbrain, the crawling, that's why you crawl because you develop your midbrain, it's so in charge of the dopamine. It's so in charge of your time management. It's in charge of just being able to like transition and move from one thing to the next. And if your crawl isn't organized, it's going to be really hard to just look at a task and do it and complete it. And this is why so many people that find us, they're like, I've started 13 projects or I've started Mm. 15 books, haven't finished one. It's because your brain just can't complete the whole task. And it's such a thing that all of us humans experience. And then that's coupled with our programming. And Paloma was Mm -hmm. just talking about and I was talking about my programming of like the codependency stuff because we talked about that in the last episode. But if you don't have like a good sense of like, you know, you were talking about your messaging from your mom and how your mom would say to do one thing and then do the opposite thing. And you were just confused your whole life. You're like, well, what should I do? Exactly. And And I, and that's where your brain is like, if you're constantly being told like, oh, be this, be that, do this, do that, eat this, no, eat that. Mm -hmm. You're just like, and so my nervous system went into freeze, like absolute freeze. And I couldn't, I didn't feel emotions. I don't think I noticed that until I started truly like thinking about it and like really coming back to that. I I didn't like cry or like well up or like have those like emotional responses that sometimes I see kids like, you know, those TikTok videos where they like cry because they got a new puppy and stuff. I was like, I would have never done that as a child. And the I would have. The only <laughs> time I had an emotion was when it was a tantrum and that it was really big. That was like yeah. explosive throwing things, slamming doors, like Mm. for the silliest thing. Like my mom didn't want to get me a pair of pants that I wanted at the mall. And so that just destroyed, you know, my whole afternoon. And so that's where my nervous system went into that. And it was just like, I'm going to disconnect from the body completely because this is too much. I don't know what to do. And that's a very common response for fight or flight, right? For probably one of the primitive reflexes that was on for me, maybe the moral, maybe the fear paralysis, maybe one of the later ones, but that's where my, my brain kind of got like stuck in that mode. And I feel like that happens to so many people. Like so many of us are out there with a nervous system that's in flight and we don't even know, or in fight and don't even know, or freeze or fawn. And that's the cool piece is like, once you start to bring your brain out of that, you're able to have more flexibility. That's yeah. that's the first thing that people start to notice is that it's, one is that they're more calm and two is that they're more flexible. They're more easygoing with like things that happen in their day to day. Yeah. Able to adapt is huge. So mm-hmm. like, honestly, you integrated your fear paralysis reflex, which got you out of the free state. And then you integrated your moral reflex, which calmed mm-hmm. down the fight or flight. So mm-hmm. then you were able to now step into, oh, wait, I can see things for what really I want. Right. Exactly. And it was because then it was tripping up your fawn response because you're like fawning back into abandoning you, becoming whatever your mom wanted you to be. Mm-hmm. And once you started shifting out of that, you're like, wait, what do I want? And so sometimes, <laughs> yeah. and I did the same thing. And sometimes we look at it and go, well, what do I want? Because I've never actually really asked my, myself, like, who am I? What am I here to do? Because we're just yes. taking on what everybody thinks we should be. Right. And so for parents listening right now, if your child is exploring something new and they're questioning it, like we just want you to support that questioning process with them. It doesn't mean you let them off the hook. It doesn't mean you say, oh, yeah, you're right. You don't like this. Don't do it. Because my son hated baseball when he first started. (laughs) Yeah. His moro needed some attention and he was terrified of the ball. Right. And my instinct was I need to push him into an uncomfortable place because that's where you grow. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you just need to test it out a little bit longer and you need to grow. And then that that moment is what shifted his whole trajectory because then that's what connected us to all these amazing people and got us into the pod and all these things. And I'm like, see that? You push yourself into that uncomfortable space and then really cool things happen. And that's the same thing for when I was getting a divorce. I was like, I'm putting myself in the most uncomfortable thing in the entire world. I'm going to, you know, move back in with my parents because I knew I could not start a business, raise two kids and, 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 and. And I was like, but I had no shame in it. I didn't yeah. feel like I was lessened because I looked at it as what is success to me? Success exactly. to me is honoring me, is saying, hey, you're not happy with something. You need to go figure out what's your truth. And I'm totally. so grateful my parents gave me that time and space to figure it out. And now that I'm like through a lot of it, I'm like, oh no, I need to meditate now. Now I need to transcend right. to like another level. Like I love that we're know. both at this point too. I, and I was talking about do that. Yeah. 
<laughs> we always do that. We're like, because I had been talking about the meditation. Then you were like, oh, I don't know. So blah, blah. And then one day you were like, I'm into meditation. I was Why? like, wait, let's both do it, right? Because I went to Dr. Joe Dispenza's premiere right. two weeks ago and he showed all the science of what happens with meditation. And, you know, I've been really on a path to I found Jesus and I'm like so into all of just you know, figuring out, like turning my power over to something bigger and better than me. And that's been a huge shift in my life. And now I'm like, but wait, there's more I want to bring into this. And I, you know, so then meditation came in and I was like, no, I can't do it. I just can't do it. But then I saw all the science behind it. And Dr. Joe has, he didn't invent meditation, just like we didn't invent brain work or any of this. But what our goal is, is to bring the science out in this. So people are like yes. less resistant to stepping exactly. in and getting weird on the floor. But Dr. Joe has brought in the science and I was watching it. They like these scientists at UCSD could not believe how much the blood in our body transformed from pre meditation to after like people were creating ways of like fighting off infection just by meditating. It's and amazing. I was like, okay, that's now my next step. I need to do this and, and I need to start. Yeah. And I think that if you hadn't been at this point of regulation, right. you wouldn't have been able to push yourself into the uncomfortability. So that's where I think that's where I like to, to look at it that way. I, that's where I hold a lot of space. Cause sometimes it's easy to get frustrated with people where you're like, you're making these decisions that you don't like, and that are putting you, they're sticking you in the same cycle. They're sticking you in a bad situation that you know, isn't good for you. But at a certain point, it's like, that's cause your nervous system just can't handle more and your nervous system can't handle putting yourself in that uncomfortable situation to create the change that creates the growth that aligns you more with who you want to be. I mean, there's just so much, right? Yeah. And so that's why I always say it's so important to hold space and to really come to things when you're ready. If you ever feel something's a little bit forced, it's not the right time. Okay. Don't do it because that's your intuition telling you that, that, that sometimes the resistance is good, right? Sometimes you're not ready to do certain things right. or to look at certain things. We talk about this all the time with certain reconnects, right? Where I'm like, I have put certain reconnects off for like two years, but we just did a couple, right? We just checked a bunch right now. And I already had a lot of them because I have been working on them right afterward when I was ready to actually face them. And okay. that's one of the biggest things. Then I think a lot of people sometimes will go into like a new methodology without having the the brain um, co component like kind of sorted. And so they're doing this one thing, but they don't have the other piece. So this other thing doesn't always either finish working or get them to where they want to be or align with who they are truly wanting to become, right? That's why we always say you have to regulate the nervous system before you attempt to do anything else. And that's why I think we both are ready for the meditation. I wouldn't have been, when I started trying to meditate, it was when I was in San Diego doing like being your intern. Right. I, I wasn't even creeping back then. Like, of course I couldn't meditate. I mean, and I was meditating though. I got to tell you, I was. You were, I remember. I remember. My, friend, my friend gifted me headspace for a year and I would be like, okay, I got to meditate. I got to do this. And then I would sit there with the headphones on and my head would just go in so many different directions. And I was like, gosh. And I would start to get angry. And I was like, this feels like it's counterproductive right now. And another big program I always had running through me because I grew up in a house where you just didn't sit and chill. You always had to be doing something. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I'm just sitting and chilling. How is this saving anything? Well, at least when I'm creeping, I'm moving. I'm <laughs> going somewhere, right? And it looks like I'm efforting in some capacity, but sitting and doing nothing? No, thank you. What? And I remember I was like, but now my brain is so regulated. Like it trips me out how regulated I am because I like catch myself. I'm like, wow, I don't even like engage in things like I used to. And it's mm -hmm. so great. I love not being in these crazy spaces anymore. And now I'm like, I think I can actually tap into these deeper things because I've done all these reconnects that have really set my program up to receive. So I've created like a container that can hold exactly what is going to go next. And I'm like, Oh, I like that. Right. It's and like it's when you're, when you're creeping and crawling and doing yeah. your brain work, you're opening that container, you, you're making it like deeper so that so much more can come into your space, into, into your experience when you're ready for it. Oh, I love that. So good. Cause that was another big part for me. I was like, okay, I've regulated my nervous system. I now can identify why that person said this and what it triggered in me. And I can immediately shift that. And then I was yes. like, Ooh, but I have a really deep wound that keeps running. And I was like, I think I need to learn how to just sit and feel my emotions because mm -hmm. I have never 
explore that. That's my next thing. I'm like, when I feel sadness, I immediately want to go do something to make myself happy. Mm. When I feel angry, I'm immediately creeping to like stop the anger, right? Versus being like, hey, you're a human. These are emotions. So anger can come in you and out of you. And we tell this to people all the time. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you have to like be angry, have a meltdown at the mall because you didn't get your pants. You're just <laughs> yeah. like, I feel angry right now that I didn't get what I wanted, but I can learn to like adapt to this situation. Yes. And I never was taught that. You weren't taught that. None of, no, I don't think really any of us were taught that. Mm -mm. Um, and if you were, you're totally the exception to this. And at the same time, and this is also coupling with as we're doing the nurtured parenting revolution. Right. Exactly. Prayer, that's, yeah. And we're reparenting ourselves. And I'm like, and then the craziest thing. So I go see the Dr. Joe Dispenza just fell into my lap. Like my friend's like, I have a ticket for you. I'm taking you. I'm, you know, just like the whole thing. And it was just like such a flow. And I'm like, okay, you yes. know, when that resistance is lifting, because all of a sudden things start flowing and just mm -hmm. effortless. Right. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I love that. I can see the science behind this. Now I'm buying in. And then I randomly, oh, my chiropractor randomly reached out to oh, me. Yeah. Like, hey, you want to come and I have something you have to try because that's the one thing. I don't like to just sit and meditate to like someone talking and we talk about this all the time because yeah. then they tell us these really crazy scenarios so that we get yeah. up and up. We're like, what? Jump out of a plane right now? How's that? Yeah, like, wait, I thought I was just on a mountain and now I'm in an elevator and now <laughs> yeah, I'm on a plane, but then we're like, now I'm in a lake? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> like our, our, our subconscious is like, okay, that's ridiculous. We're not, yeah. we're still re resistant to that. That must but be he, something though. That must be something because be. I overanalyze things all the time. Like not just with the meditation, not okay. overanalyze. I immediately like, w like do that, right? Where I'm yeah. looking at the little pieces of it instead of just, I know it's just a figure of speech. I'm not actually on a plane and then on a yeah. mountain and then in the lake, right? But my logical brain like jumps in that. Maybe that that'll help with the, with the meditation. 100%. And so I went to see my chiropractor last week and he had me lay down. He had me on a PM PEMF mat. And then also on top of this other cool thing that like vibrated and was making noises. And it was so haptic nose, haptic, yeah, haptic, haptic mat. Like that. It was like a haptic mat. We'll link it in the show notes if you want to explore it. I, I have not participated in it in it like frequently enough. I've done it once. Let's just be clear. Um, anyway, so I did it. And then he also put like an infrared light over me. And I was blown away. And my kids were sitting in the room with me. And they're just like, there's a funny video. I had Siggy take a video of me doing it. And she's like, mom's doing some weird thing now. <laughs> like my kids are so exposed to the weird stuff. They're I do. so funny. And, um, and I was like, what just happened? Like I went somewhere. But it's because my container was open and able to take in more. Mm -hmm. So yes. then – I told my chiropractor, I was like, that's so cool. I really want one. But I wasn't clear on my messaging of definitely order me one. Yeah. And he texted me like two days ago. He's like, your thing is here. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I didn't mean to actually say order it because it's kind of pricey. And I was like, but you know what? I need to not be resistant to prioritizing me. And I've exactly. been asking for meditation and this came into my world. This and it is another helped you already. Yes. That I'm like, I need to do this. Like I need to take this on and do it and not feel guilt or shame or anything. Like this is about me taking care of me so I can take my place, myself to another place yes. of like really being able to sit in my emotions. So I'm, we'll keep you posted on this and, yeah. <laughs> and um, how it goes. So, but I just think it's so cool because so much of just the human experience is getting new information, having it make sense inside of your mind before you're able to step into something else. Mm -hmm. And we just want to be the people who say we get it. We understand the mechanics behind the brain and why it's not easy to intake new information. We also want to tell you we're here to hold space for you. And so yes. there's no excuses needed if you're like, I'm not ready. We get it. Don't even give us – just say I'm not ready yet. And yeah, we got that. Fine. Like we're that's like, fine. hey, we will hold space for you for when you are ready. And Because we're projectors. We wait, wait for the invitation. We don't push things on people. And you know what's so funny? Like I waited for the invitation to do something. Yes. And not everybody was on board. And then there was a lot of pushback, which is so interesting. So that was good feedback to me. I like that. To one, have a hundred percent on board clarity. Invitation. Yes. 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 Invitation. So, um, we, and also too, Lindsay on our last episode, all she did was 10, 15 exploding rocks a day. A day. So that took her two minutes. 
And from doing just that reflex integration, it opened her up to now I'm ready to do more. Mm -hmm. So that moral reflex is so freaking strong. It's yeah. so, it comes on really quick. If mm -hmm. this is why, this is a, a PSA. If you ever jump out from behind a wall to scare somebody, we're asking you to please stop because yeah. it turns on your reflexes because your brain isn't expecting it and it thinks it's an attack. Like Ellen used to do this on her show all the time. Yeah. She would jump out of the box and everyone grabs their heart. Do you ever see yeah. that? Like, oh my gosh. Because you want to have a startle reflex that's healthy. Like you're walking down the street, a car crashes. You want to look and have like attention to it and be prepared for what's coming at me. But if you're brushing your teeth in your room and you're living with your partner and they walk by and that <gasps> startles you, that's a sign that that reflex is not where it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. And by jumping out at people, it creates adrenaline and cortisol in that person who just got scared. And so now it turns on these reflexes and the brain goes, okay, it's time to survive again. Yeah, exactly. And like, oh, And if you have this moro that stays retained you're somebody who just experiences a lot of everyday challenges. And one of the main things is, is just being resistant, resistant mm -hmm. to change, resistant to feedback, resistant to releasing control and just okay. being in the flow. So if you heard anything today, 10 exploding rocks will get you out of that and we can help you with that. Yes. And, but we'll wait until you're ready. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. Okay. So thank you for being here. Uh, remember to subscribe and rate the podcast and share it and ask us any questions. We're always on social media. We're always, you know, answering emails. So anything that comes up and you want to learn more about, you always, always, always can reach out to us. We, it, we answer our own emails. We take a little bit while sometimes but we do answer them. Um, and so follow us also on social media. It's in, in the cortex underscore us is our English uh, Instagram. And then our Spanish Instagram is in the cortex underscore ESP. Our Facebook is in the cortex US and in the cortex ESP. Our TikTok is in underscore the underscore cortex. Our email is hello at in the cortex.com. And our website is www.inthecortex.com. We have two things to share with you today. One is our Brainiac promo code, which is going to give you 10 bucks off the first payment of your membership with us of our, of our in the cortex bundle. And the other one is that we just started our nurtured parenting through brain reorganization program last week, two weeks ago, if you're listening to it now, um, or three weeks ago, if you're listening to it now, yeah, three weeks ago but you should join. We started the first live call. It's recorded. So you're not going to lose that first part. It is amazing. We have such a great community of people that are there that we just want to grow. The, the program will be available after the three month uh, program the, the, that we're doing uh, live. And so you can always, you know, get it afterward and just watch the recordings, but it has been just so, 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 so great. So please join us. That program is with Dr. Greer Kirschenbaum from the Nurture Revolution. You've probably heard of her because we're very much in the same circles. Mm. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for being here and goodbye. Thank you. Oh no, where did my mouse go? Here. Stop. Stop.